Brothers and sisters, cats and chicks, yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. It's the super flashy, thumping, disco version of Slip Through the Cracks right here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Dr. Mouth. Wow, how do you like that? No, spent, no expense spared for this high-end YouTube show right here, ladies and gentlemen. But the sign is correct. We are going to talk disco, man. And, and yeah, so I mean, if there's some of you out there, I know disco, it was definitely a type of music and a trend that split people right down the middle. There was people that absolutely loved it. And there were those that absolutely hated it. I mean, they had that huge riot and rally in um, a giant football stadium and they burned all the disco records and all that kind of stuff. So very polarizing disco, that's for sure. But before we get in depth with disco, I want to talk about a couple other things quick. Um, and it leads right into what we're going to talk about. I put out an Instagram uh, photo a little while ago where I had come home from a Saturday of binging at the Salvation Army. And I had a whole stack of records. I had about 20 records. And I said two of them I thought were my big scores of the day. One of them was the final album by Cream, Goodbye Cream. You know, it's very rare that a band knows they're going to break up. So these guys knew it was happening. And they thought they'd call the record Goodbye. And there they are, dancing off into the moonlight there was cream so I, that one I got and this one as well and this really is a bit of a score because I'd never heard it before it's Mash McCann they were a Canadian psychedelic band from the late 60s they had a, a big hit with a song called As Tears Go By uh, but this record is actually way better than I thought it was as I played it's got a lot of actually heavy guitar it's much heavier I thought they were more of a pop band and it's not. It's actually quite heavy and pretty rocking. So I posted those as the two that I thought were the big score. But you know what? As I go through the stack and I start listening to some of them, there's one that really I think kind of stands out from all of them. So that's what we're going to talk about. And that's what leads us to disco. Now, I'll just a little bit to talk about disco. As I mentioned, it was all consuming. It was such a big trend. Uh, you know, the nightclubs were huge. Uh, all of a sudden, all these clubs that would have live bands, they would stop doing that, and it was all just disco music and DJs. It was a very, very big thing. Uh, infiltrated many big pop stars. Rod Stewart had a disco song with Do You Think I'm Sexy. Paul McCartney had a disco song with Good Night Tonight. Uh, the Kinks had a disco song on this record here. It was called Wish I Could Fly Like Superman. Uh, the Rolling Stones even had a disco song, Miss You from Some Girls, which is a classic Stones album. This album is really great. And why this this one was a big hit for them. This one actually worked out well. But it just goes to show you how big of an influence it was. All kinds of different people. Look at the Bee Gees, the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Huge disco record with Staying Alive and that stuff there. And it bled into other areas as well. You know, novelty songs, which by this time in the 70s are really starting to burn out. They're not very popular anymore. Even these could be big hits. Rick Dees, who was a DJ and his cast of idiots, did this amazing 45 that was a classic, Disco Duck. And you heard this on the radio constantly. It was a huge hit at the time. And then, of course, the ultimate uh, way to judge if the exploitation has gone to the highest level, did they make disco Christmas records? Well, yes, they did, ladies and gentlemen. Here's one right here, Disco Noel, in which it seems to be telling us that uh, if you can't uh, go out in disco, you might as well just set up the music at home and dance with your Christmas tree. Because that's what it looks like this lovely lady is doing right here. No one wanted to take her to the disco, and so she's at home dancing with her tree. And then there's this one as well that I have, the Christmas Disco Party record, even with the special shaped cardboard sleeve there. It's all rounded off on the edges. And uh, definitely not Mrs. Claus on the front there with Santa, that's for sure. Um... I don't think that's one of the elves either. I think Santa might be stepping out to Studio 54 in between trips around the world. Uh, but these records, the Christmas disco records, again, like any kind of exploitation, they would take old classics like Silent Night and God Rest You Merry Gentlemen and those kind of tunes and put them to a disco beat. And a lot of the times, it's like super annoying. It might be fun for a cheesy party, but not something that you're going to listen to on a regular basis. And I always thought, you know... Christmas disco, that's got to be as cheesy as it gets for cashing in on disco. And then I'm going through the records there the other day, and I find this. Can you can you read what that says? Yes. Hallelujah Disco. I found a Christian disco record. I'm like, I saw this. I'm like, this has to be the ultimate in exploitation here. They've actually had a Christian religious disco record. So... 
I'm like, I have to take this home. I have to, I have to hear it. I have to sacrifice a dollar fifty for this one. I have to hear what it's all about. And so, I get it home, and the thing is, it's not what the cover makes you think. It's actually a compilation of '70s funk, soul, gospel bands, and as a result. It's friggin' fantastic. There's no disco to be found anywhere on this record. Um, it's just an amazing collection. This label, ABC Records, had a couple different labels back in the day, and they one of them was Songbird, which was an all-religious label, which is where some of these tracks come from. It's a compilation, and it's it's outstanding. It's great funk music, and there's nothing really overtly religious about most of the tracks on here. This first one, though, on side A, it's a uh, Andrea Vereen and the St. Mark's Choir. It's called Who Is He? And that one, it's blatantly about Jesus because they have a great chorus where they sing, J -j 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 Jesus. Uh, so that, but it's again, it's awesome. It's funky. This one by Carl Bean and Universal Love, it's called Something for Nothing. And I have no, I, I, I've listened to it like a million times and I still can't figure out what it's got to do with Christianity. I'm totally confused by that one. Uh, all they're talking about is people want something for nothing. Well, yeah, yeah, so what's that got to do with Christianity? It almost sounds like the other side of the fence. And it's kind of got a grumpy to tone to it, like, something, everybody wants something for nothing. It's like, okay. Uh, also on side one, uh, th this band I really did some digging with, and they sound amazing, the Salem Travelers. And they did a whole series of records, starting in the 50s, right up into the 70s and 80s. And on this one... They do uh, a version of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot that's really good and really heavy. It's um, funny because when I think of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, I think of, whoa, being tired, being beaten down, but the Lord will take us home one day. Whereas this one's like, it's all swagger, and it's like, yeah, I'm taking the chariot. I'm going. It's, it's pretty awesome. And side two, we got a couple tracks by Reverend Nate Townsley Jr. and the Lighthouse Ensemble. And there's a tune called There's a Man, but they never say who the man is. I mean, you know, they're talking about, they say, like, he is peace, he is love, he is light. So you assume they're talking about Jesus, but never do they say it. They just say, there's a man, who is he? There's a man. Can you see him? There's the man. Pretty funny. So not again, not overtly religious. And this one too by uh, Inez Andrews. Great song called Believe in Humanity. And it's just basically about questioning whether man is... Uh, good and can you believe in each other it's you know somewhat uh, a little bit skeptical and a little bit critical so again not really religious at all and we get another one here yeah by reverend nate townsley and his group uh, old time religion which is just basically taking that old song old time religion and funking it up so i i i was absolutely blown away by this when i got it home and because I, I thought really it's just going to be crass exploitation i'm going to probably listen to it once maybe get a couple of laughs out of it and that'll be the end of it but instead not only have I got an amazing collection of gospel funk soul from the late 70s, I want to check out some of these bands. Uh, bands like the Salem Travelers, it looks like they recorded a plethora of records throughout their career. So I'm going to be doing some searching for those and trying to find some of the other artists on this record. So who knows, maybe some of those will show up in a later version of Slip Through the Cracks. But I'm telling you, this one almost slipped through my cracks, baby, because I thought, nah, what's it going to be? It's going to be a joke. And it's like, no, this record is amazing just goes to show you as bo diddley said so many times you can't judge a book by looking at the cover all right that is it dr mouth i am out of here make sure you check me out on instagram it's dr mouth posting up lots of pictures on there and uh, subscribe to this channel of course because there's going to be videos coming on a constant basis you don't want to miss one subscribing you can do it right at the bottom there and also i should note as well before i get out of here i found every single one of the tracks on hallelujah disco so i'm going to put them links to them all in the little box below so you can listen to the entire album and enjoy some great funk and not really feel like you're at church it's absolutely wonderful all right dr mouth i'm out of here and i thank you for watching